Praise God. Isaiah 65, 23, 24, and Daniel 9, 19 through 23. The Bible says this, they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. You might want to put that verse on your refrigerator right there. Daniel 9, 19 through 23 says, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication or my need before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation, and he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth and I am come to show thee for thou art greatly beloved therefore understand the matter and consider the vision I want to preach to you tonight from the subject while I was praying while I was praying I really don't feel like I'm going to preach I feel like I'm going to impart to you something tonight that will change your prayer life forever if you'll let it change you because you're going to see answers in fact I speak it right now a season of answered prayers coming to you in this church corporately and to your family also right now in the name of the Lord Jesus a season of answered prayers will be released tonight in Jesus name beginning with this service a season has shifted right now and the answered prayers are all on the way. I worship you, Lord Jesus. Would somebody thank the Lord right now in advance? Would you lift up your voice and thank the Lord right now? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And you may be seated. One of my heroes, if you want to call it that, uh, that men of God that I look up to, he's, he's, he's dead and gone. I never met him, but I just went to his grave for the first time two weeks ago and spent a little while there praying at the grave, was a man by the name of Verbal Beam. He was very powerful. He wrote books on prayer. That's why he was a hero of mine. His books have changed my life. His book on prayer, his books on the works of the Holy Ghost, uh, two life-changing books for free right there. Just, just if you want to get your life changed, go read those two books. But he was very powerful in prayer. He, he died far too young, two weeks before his 44th birthday, was killed in a tragic car accident but was probably the most powerful man of prayer in our day and time, died in 1977. Let me give you an instance of how connected to God he was before I get into this message. Uh, he was so deep in prayer. Um, one, one time a pastor called him and said, I, I want you to come preach for me. And, and, and Brother Bean said, well, um, I don't feel to come right now. So for a couple of years, the pastor called him, and a couple of years, Brother Bean just said no. And then, and then finally, he was praying on a Monday morning, and the Lord said, I want you to call that pastor and go now. I want you to get to that town, go in that church, and pray from now until Wednesday. And then Wednesday, I want you to preach at that church. And so he called the pastor and said, the Lord told me to come now and so I'm going to drive that way. I've never been to your church before. I'm going to drive there. I leave leave a key under the mat, please. I'm coming and I'm going to pray at your church from Monday afternoon until Wednesday night. That would be a crazy thing for someone to try a two day prayer meeting. And so he he said okay. And so he said I'm on my way. Packed his things and drove there. He got to the place, the church, and he went into the building and he uh, found the key. Went in and went to the third row and he prayed on the. Third 
third row for about an hour. And then he, he walked up on the platform, uh, Pastor Hedabaugh, and he prayed back and forth, just pacing the floor for about an hour. Went to the Sunday school room and prayed and just did this stuff for about two days. And so Wednesday night, they introduced Brother Bean to preach. And he, if you knew who Brother Bean was, he was very slow and deliberate. He would take his time. Oftentimes, if he didn't hear from God, he would stand still and not say a word behind the pulpit for 30 minutes or longer, just staring at the people, awkward. And so he, he, he gets to the pulpit and he said, I got here Monday afternoon and I went to that third row and I prayed right there for an hour. And then I came up here on the platform and I walked back and forth and prayed for an hour. Then I went to the Sunday school. He was just describing this. And he said, somewhere in the midst of that, the spirit took me out of this building and we went left down the highway one mile and we went to uh, another street came at one mile at the one mile mark and we took a right and names the street and then he said we went a half mile down that street and another street and we took a left on that such and such street and he names that street and he said we went past the first four houses to the fifth house and he names the address of the house and says the spirit took me inside the house there was a four bedroom house we went past the first three rooms to the fourth room there was a uh, bed there was a dresser and a uh, chest of drawers in the, in the corner. There was five drawers in the chest of drawers. The third drawer was open, and three dead babies were inside that drawer, and three human spirits were killed in that house. And whoever you are, you need to confess, and revival will break out in this church. And if you do not confess, God will shut this church down. It was the pastor's address. He had been abusing his three daughters in that house for years. He resigned on the spot. Brother Burble Bean preached 27 straight weeks from that Wednesday night. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds received the Holy Ghost. They even brought a new pastor in during the revival. This is just one of several stories I could tell you about him. And you understand why he would be a hero of someone because he was so connected to God in prayer. Why are you talking about him? Because he said something that made me go into the scriptures and look and begin to pursue it in my life and it's changed my life and I want to give it to you. He said there are two types of prayer that God will answer. If you're tired of your prayers not being answered, there are two types of praying that get God's attention that will bring answers. Let me help you with them. He said the first type of prayer that gets God's attention is called a memorial prayer. A memorial prayer is something you pray about over and over and over, and after a while, God gives you the answer for what you've prayed for over and over and over. He Like, like Cornelius, remember in Cornelius in Acts 10, when he prayed so much that the angel said, your giving and your prayers have come up as a memorial before the Lord. And so he, he uh, Brother Bean likened it to a suit. He said if a man wanted to buy a suit and could not afford the suit, and so he would take his paycheck, and after he paid his tithes and bills, and he had a little bit of money left over, he'd go into the suit store. He'd lay that money down and say, I, I'd like to pay this money on that suit right there. The suit, the clerk would take the suit and put it back behind the counter on layaway. He, the man would leave the store without the suit but the next time he got paid he would go back in with whatever funds he had and put more money down on the suit then he would leave the store without the suit and he would do this continually until eventually he paid off what he had been desiring he said and that is how memorial prayer works I wonder how many people in this room have a loved one right now. That's two or three days of fasting away from a phone call. Oh, it's quiet. I wonder how many in this room right now have a loved one, have a miracle. That's just three days of praying and fasting away from being paid off in the spirit. And the devil's trying to tell you tonight, don't engage in what the church is starting to enter in tomorrow. Just be carnal and do your own thing. Nothing's going to change. And you had no idea that God has been waiting the entire time to give you what you prayed for seven years ago, five years ago. But you've been waiting and not making a payment. But the Lord is telling you. You right now I dare you to make one more payment and see what I can do with what you lay down in the spirit yeah. 
My grandpa was 83 years old this year, and he strong as a bull, never, never been sick in his life, lived next door, never, never complained about anything. Worked on the North Slope for 40 years, a welder, just a horse. Had chest pains in April at dinner and dead two hours later. And makes no sense. And Grandma and Grandpa had two boys, my Uncle Scott, who's 63, and my dad, who's 58, who pastors the church in Alaska. And I went to Alaska for the funerals on a Thursday night. And Wednesday night, the Lord, uh, well, my dad asked me to preach for him, and the Lord had me preach this message. And I began to tell about the power of memorial praying. And while I was preaching, at the end, I watched my Uncle Scott walk up to the altar, 63 years not in church. 63 years of grandpa praying every service for him and every day for him. And I watched as my grandmother, who was mourning and weeping and just broken, I watched her face and her eyes light up as Uncle Scott headed toward the altar. And he raised his hands. And I got to be the one to pray with him as God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you something. You might have to pray 63 years, but it'll be worth it if you keep praying. Don't let hell tell you it's worthless, it's hopeless, it'll never change. The devil, let me remind you, is still a liar. And if you can hold on to God and keep praying a prayer, keep making a payment, God's going to answer you. Someone needs to grab that word right now and just inject it in their spirit that I am going to have a miracle in my house. I've prayed too many times. God, you've got to hear me. I've cried too many prayers. That's a memorial prayer. Like that lady last weekend in Newport News, Virginia, when her mother, 88 years old, was baptized in Jesus' name. And she said, I've been trying for years to get her to come. I tell her about everything in baptism in the name of Jesus. And she says, no, I'm Catholic. I don't do it like that. And for this, some reason this morning, she talked to me and decided to come this morning. And I just happened to be there preaching on baptism in Jesus' name, not knowing about this 88-year-old lady in the audience. But God knew that other, that daughter had been making payment after payment after payment after payment the grandma was leaving the next day to go back to Puerto Rico she was leaving and never coming back to the United States but she just came back one last time and God said I'm going to give you an answer to a memorial prayer that you've been praying I dare you to get some faith back I dare Cooper City to get some faith back in their prayer life that God still answers the prayer that has been long overdue I speak in the name of Jesus that long battles are about to end in sudden victories. I don't know where that came from. Long battles are about to end in sudden victories. Some of you are still not grabbing it. You must not be in a long battle. But for those that are right now, you need to ignore everybody around you and grab the word of the Lord right now. Long battles are about to end in sudden victory. He said, though I bear long with you, yet shall I avenge you speedily. devil's convinced you that because the battle has been long the blessing will be long the answer will be long it'll be a long process but God has sent me to interrupt your train of thinking to let you know that just because the battle has been long does not mean the answer will be a process it will be a sudden immediate because our God is a God of sudden breakthrough power sudden intervention a suddenly God that can bring answers out of nowhere Sheila Bokondala Sita. Eight. I know some of you don't know what I'm feeling right now, but I just feel something up here. Long battles are about to end in sudden. <laughs> Victory. 
victories. Hmm. I want to move on. Second type of prayer that gets answered. He said it's called a current prayer. He said a current prayer is something you don't have all that time to wait to make payments on. You don't have, for instance, 63 years to wait to see if God comes through or not. You need an answer now. Anybody need a current prayer to start moving in your spirit? A current prayer means you have to have desperation above all measure. A current prayer means you got real trouble and a real prayer is not good enough. You've got to do something Bartimaeus style. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. If you've got a real situation, you can't try to fake God out in church and your fellow church members and act dignified when all hell is breaking loose in your house. Oh, it's getting quiet, but I'm going to dig it out in here right now. we got too many people that have got all kind of demonic activity in their home, and they get to church, and because they don't want you to think less of them, they act like everything's fine and all together, and that's why miracles hover over their life and never drop because they're not, they're not humble enough to say, God, no matter what else happens tonight, I'm not leaving here until you do something and you intervene in my situation. Come on, let your pride down and let your worship up and let God know I've got to have a miracle. If everything's calm, I understand why you're not feeling it. But if you're going in a storm right now, I don't understand if you don't feel that. Because if all hell is breaking loose, there's a solution. You've got to learn to pray a current prayer. You've got to learn to pray a God-changing prayer. God said, move, Moses. I'm going to kill everybody. And Moses said, no, you're not. I'm going to pray a current prayer and you're going to stop. Here's what I came to tell you tonight. Current prayers bring answers immediately. Did you know that God is so powerful that he can answer you while you are praying? I didn't think we'd understood that. Remember when Hezekiah was supposed to die? And God told Isaiah, go tell the king he's dead. Set his house in order. Remember that? And Hezekiah, Isaiah said, you've got to set your house in order. You're going to die. And Isaiah walked out of the palace, and Hezekiah turned to the wall and began to pray a current prayer. He said, you've got to save me, God. The grave can't praise you. And began to worship God. And God, before the preacher could get out of the palace, said, go back. And tell him I've just given him 15 years. Uh, Another current prayer. How about Elijah challenging the prophets of Baal? Whatever God answers by fire, let him be God. And so they prayed all day long with a baby. They cut themselves and they did everything they could to get their God's attention. And nothing happened. And all Elijah did to get God's attention was pray 63 words. Didn't even get into that request. Didn't even get to pray what he wanted to pray. But God is so powerful that God knew Elijah's going to get to this with desperation. He just dumped water out on a drain of drought on a sacrifice for no reason that's called praying something with a current spirit of prayer and God said I'm going to interrupt everything you're asking for and send you the miracle before you can even get it out of your mouth remember when Peter was in jail and they just killed James in Acts 12 and they were going to kill Peter the next morning so the church called an all night prayer meeting and they prayed without ceasing And while they were praying, there was an angel in the jail cell. 
and he got Peter out and Peter walked over by the Volan to the prayer meeting and knocked on the door and they said who is it and he said it's Peter and they said it can't be we're praying for a miracle see miracles can't happen that fast welcome to the North American church mentality See, we got it all figured out, Pete. We're going to pray tonight, and then the king's going to get sick in the morning, and something's going to delay the execution, and then we're going to pray again Tuesday night, and something's going to happen, and they're going to push it off, and somehow by Thursday, there's going to be a court situation where God changes everything, and they sentence you to prison, but not death. The logic prayer brings nothing. See, if you constantly tell God how to do it, he won't do it. Oh, I want, I want to help you with something. The reason why some people do not get answers is because they pray the right prayer, but then they start bossing God around. And they say, I need you to do it like this. And I need to, and God, if, you're, if this is really your will, by 315, Monday afternoon, this, I'm going to get this phone call. And this, this person is going to call and say this. And 315 comes and goes. And then by 330, they have no faith at all in God. They're questioning everything about God because he didn't obey their order. But God can't be pushed around. His ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And so if God's going to do it, my job is not to tell him when to do it, how to do it. My job is to thank him in advance for him doing it. That's all I've got to do is get in a place where I know you're going to come through. Remember when Jonah was in the whale and he didn't pray for three days? Does that bother anyone besides me? That Jonah was in the whale for three days and then he prayed? I mean, three seconds I'm thinking for me. I'm not a prayer warrior. I'm not super spiritual, but I'm thinking three seconds. I'm in a whale. I'm going to pray. I'm alive still. I'm going to pray. Three days. You talk about some people have so much pride. Find a way out. I'm going to find my own way out. I'm going to swim up here. Maybe I can crawl up the spout. I'll let that sink in a little bit. Jonah, three days, didn't pray. And the second he turned his head toward Jerusalem and began to pray, God spoke to the fish, and the fish had been an undercurrent. He was, he was actually a transportation system. He was a vehicle for the miraculous. He was carrying Jonah beneath the surface to where Jonah needed to be. He was right by the shore waiting to throw him up the entire time. All Jonah had to do was pray a current prayer. So I said to God, if this is really true, which it is in the Bible, obviously, if it happened then, it can happen now. So a few months ago, and God gave me this message, I went to my first service with it. And I've seen a lot of miracles. I've been blessed, and there's your pastor and these preachers up here. We've, and you've seen miracles, and so you know God is a miracle-working God. But I, I wanted God to... Honestly, I wanted God to back me up. I wanted God, I was going to preach this, and I wanted to see what God was going to do. So I stepped up, and I preached that God answers current prayers. No matter who's around you, if you pray something like Bartimaeus prayed, you get in that dimension of praying with desperation. Something's going to happen. There was a 12-year-old girl in the audience with scoliosis who had never touched her feet in her life. Huge hump in her back. Bellevue. In the middle of the altar call, I didn't even know she was in the room. This, this came to me afterwards. In the middle of the altar call, she's leaning over, and she starts praying, and no one's praying for her, but she starts praying a current prayer. And apparently, Jesus thought, I'm going to show her who I am. Because in front of 500 people, the hump in her back disappeared in front of everyone. And she stood up straight and touched her feet for the first time in her life. Because she knows about a God that answers current prayers. 
They brought a lady up in a wheelchair, and it was her first service. And, and normally when I pull on people in wheelchairs, if, if, if they can move their hands and arms, I can get a pretty quick indication if they're coming out or not by, by their, their pull on me. If they really want up, they're, they're doing something. Sometimes you pull, and they really don't want to get up. Just an inside deal there. So I, I, I grabbed her hand, and, and she, she got the Holy Ghost. We prayed for her. She spoke in tongues, and, and we started to pull her out of the wheelchair. And me and this one other guy, and we were walking around. We were basically carrying her one arm, and he had the other arm and all of a sudden as we're walking I hear the lady in first service ever and she's walking with us she's probably 80 years old and she starts prophesying I leaned down I said am I hearing right and I leaned down and she starts and this is what she's saying by his stripes I shall be healed by his stripes I shall be healed by his stripes I shall be healed she got the fifth verse of that out and she dropped my arm and dropped the other guy's arm and began to walk because there's something about having a current prayer I feel the Holy Ghost in your spirit so I went from there to Merced, California the next Sunday and was at Brother Emery's church. And, and, and in that service, I thought, you know what? We got some, I'm going to preach this message about uh, God is a God that answers prayers while we're praying. And I got the scoliosis girl story to tell. I got the wheelchair lady. I'm going to preach this and you're going to do crazy miracles. And apparently God doesn't need me. Don't laugh because he doesn't need you either. Because I thought I was going to preach this, and then, boom, he was going to show up. He said, I think I'll show up before you preach. So you can't get any credit for this. There was a deaf lady on the front row in her 50s, never heard a sound in her life, but she started praying in song service. She must have been praying a current prayer. Because while they were playing, and while I was looking at my notes, getting ready for everything to, you know, blast the people with, well, let's go into this dimension of prayer, she started screaming, and everyone looked at her because God popped her ears wide open on the front row when nobody touched her, but she started praying in a dimension of desperation that caused God to move. I brought another lady up to the altar, and she'd been praying for the Holy Ghost, and we, and we prayed for an older lady, and she received the Holy Ghost instantly, and we all were rejoicing. We found out afterwards she was praying for the Holy Ghost since 1959. But she came up that night and said, I'm getting it tonight, prayed, instantly received the Holy Ghost. There was another lady in a wheelchair, had not walked in four years that night, and they brought her up, and she, she slowly walked out of the wheelchair, passed her head up all, and Brother Emery was, uh, was walking beside her like this, just kind of holding her. She walked her all the way across the front, and I, you know, she, she kind of got to that corner over there, and she kind of turned back like, I need to go back to the chair. Some people go right back. I'm crazy, but I body slam wheelchairs when they come out of them, because if the wheelchair's broke, you can't ride in it. You won't walk. And so he, she turned around to go back, and, and I'm just, I'm, I, was, I saw the whole thing firsthand. I mean, you could just see she was in pain, and she was trying, and she got about halfway right in front of the pulpit, and Bishop Emery went like this from holding her, and he, he was, he was kind of holding her arm like this, and he noticed her. He noticed the doubt, and he stopped, and he went behind her, and he said, in Jesus' name like that, and her back went, Shh. And she went, whoa, and she began to dance, and she began to shout, and she was instantly here. Why? Because the bishop learned to pray something that would release power in the body. The next Sunday, I went to Modesto, California, and we were in a service there, and I said, okay, now I got the, I got the scoliosis girl, I got the wheelchair lady, I got the deaf ear lady, I got the 1959 Holy Ghost seeker, I've got the other lady in the wheelchair. But if you want to do it before I preach, go ahead. He let me preach that night. And so I brought everyone forward that was sick. And I said, if you will just pray with desperation, miracles will happen instantly. 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 And there was, like, for instance, one lady was blind in her right eye, had been blind for years. Blood filled her entire eye socket. A, a faithful saint in the church. She raised her hands, worshiped God, no one touched her, opened her eyes, the blood disappeared completely. She had perfect vision out of a blind eye. That's coincidence. No, it's desperation. It's called a current prayer. 
There was a girl up on the platform, Pastor Adabal, in the choir loft, had a big old tumor deal on her neck, went to touch the tumor with her hand to pray. By the time she got her hand from here to here, she couldn't touch the tumor because the tumor had disappeared when she moved her hand this far. Some of you are patty kicking it like you don't believe it because if you... But I promise you, if you can get a hold of it. So at the end of the service, end of the service, Brother Guthridge, this, this young guy walks. I love people that don't know Pentecostal protocol. I love new converts that don't know that we're supposed to act dignified. There's another word for dignified, backslid. But so this, this young dude, Pastor Adderball just runs up on the platform. He's like, church, he's like, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, man. He said, I'm Tony. I said, hey, Tony. He said, I'm 22. I said, I'm Josh. I'm 34. He said, he said uh, I got to tell you what just happened. I said, I've never been to church before. I said, okay. He said, you're not going to believe this. Pulls his phone out. And he said, this was Thursday night and shows me this gruesome motorcycle wreck. He said, this was me Thursday night. I crashed my bike at 90 miles an hour. Look, you can't even see my legs. They're covered in blood. And I'm like, oh, thank you for this. He said, this is my first church service. I said, this was Thursday night. This is Sunday night. And he said, this is three days ago. He said, yeah. He said, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, try me. He said, they put me in the back. He said, I could barely move. I'm in such pain. He said, you started preaching about this God that can heal instantly. He said, so I thought to myself, when he's done preaching, thank you, I'm going to go down to the front, and I'm going to pray to be healed, and I'm going to get healed. And I said, is that what happened? He said, no. I said, what happened? He said, as soon as I thought that, he said, I'm just going to tell you how it is, preacher. This cool breeze went down my neck and down my back, and he said, something touched my legs. You're not going to believe it, but the wounds have disappeared from my legs like they never were there. Somebody get a hold of God. Somebody get a hold of God. Went from there to Ohio. There's a blind guy in the church there. I've prayed for that dude so many times. Nothing's ever happened for him. I've prayed for him every time I go there. Nothing. I was praying for him again that Sunday morning. Was praying real hard. I noticed this 18-year-old kid was following me everywhere I went. I was praying. I look at him right there. I go over here and pray. He'd be right here. I was like, I go over here and pray with this person. He'd be right here. I was like, okay. I go over and pray. I was like, God, I got a stalker on my hands. I pray for the blind guy and the kids right there. You know, I pray for the blind guy in the name of Jesus. Be whole. Nothing. I look over and the kids are staring. I was like. I wonder if this kid has more faith than I do. I was like, let's try something. Tears rolling down the kid's face. Listen, if you're 18, 16, 15, God can use you tonight. 12. That kid, I grabbed that kid's hand. I said, let me see your hand. I grabbed his hand. I stuck it on the blind guy's face. I said, pray, like right now, pray. I walked away, walked to the platform, didn't get 10 steps on the platform. He was grabbing my coattail. He said, he can see, he can see. God just opened his eyes. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be on the platform. You just got to have a desire, a hunger to pray like you've never prayed. Too many of us are praying in doubt, making God out to be a liar, as Charles Finney said. We're praying our prayers in doubt like he's not even there. He doesn't care. and He's not going to answer. That's why nothing happens. Went that night to a service. I was telling a story that night about a guy that was in the altar, hadn't heard from his daughter in years. And so he, and this was a story a couple years ago in Nashville, and I'm telling this story that night in Ohio. And I'm telling about this guy in, in Nashville that was praying in the altar for, to hear from his kid. And he's in his 60s, and he's praying to hear from his daughter. And while he was praying, his, his phone rang. This guy could finish my message. He's like ahead of me and everything. And he reaches down and doesn't recognize the number. He says, oh, no way. Goes to the back door. Hello. Hey, Dad. 
want a relationship with you again. So I tell that story that night, and I didn't know any idea there's a man out in the audience that hasn't heard from his boy in years. And so he goes to the altar, Pastor Hedabal, and just starts wailing, God, let me hear from my kid. Let me hear from my kid. Let me hear from my son. And he goes out to the car, and he's missed a call from his mom. So he calls his mom and says, hey, mom, what's going on? I was in church. She said, your son just called. He said, what? She, how long ago? About 10 minutes ago. What did he want? He called to tell me, to tell you, he's booked an airplane ticket to come see you. He wants a relationship with you again. Coincidence? We're not there yet. We're all, I need, there's one more thing, you need, one more story you need to know, and then I think the gift of faith will start moving. So th there's a miracle for a family in here tonight. There's a miracle coming for a family in here tonight involving your children. Hell has lost its grip. And so all they're doing is yelling now at you. But they've lost their grip. The miracle's about to manifest. I was in, Sacram I was in uh, San Jose, excuse me, th three or four months ago. We were in San Jose, Janae and I and the boys. And we were preaching, and a, and a man walked up to me, and I, I met him years ago, and he said, Brother Josh. I said, yeah. He said, I've got a prayer request, man. I said, tell me. He said, my wife and I have been married a couple years. He said, she has... A couple of kids from her first marriage, and we have a couple of kids. And he said, and the kids from her first marriage, the two kids, she lost them in a custody battle to her ex-husband because he had money. And when she lost the kids, the first thing he did when the kids got home to his house was he told them, you're never allowed to mention God again. You're never allowed to go to church again. Never allowed to read a Bible again. Don't talk to any church people again. And for two years... They've been calling us, crying, wanting to come home because they want to live for God, and, and he won't let them. And we go to court, and we don't have enough evidence to overturn the case. It's been two years of this. He said, my wife is just tormented beyond imagination, as any mother in this room would be. And he said, I don't know what to do. And I said, okay, when's the next court date? He told me it's about two months from now. I said, okay. I said, where's the court at? It's in Portland, Oregon. I said, okay, here's my phone number. I want you to call me or text me the night before. We'll pray together. Go on a fast. Fast for an answer. I told him, fast 10 days. And he said, okay, let's do it. He fasted 10 days. And so I was in Indiana preaching a revival. And it was like a Monday night. Pastor had a ball. And he texted me after Monday afternoon and said, hey, Josh, just wanted to let you know the court date's tomorrow at 8.30, Portland, Oregon time. It's 11.30, Muncie, Indiana time. So three hours, I'm three hours ahead. I said, okay, no problem. I said, I'll get up. I got church tonight, but after tomorrow morning, I'll get up and I'll pray. God's going to take care of it in Jesus' name. That night we had church. We had a 13-year-old girl, blind, legally blind. We prayed God opened her eyes. We went crazy. We were rejoicing. The next morning, I'm just going to be honest because this is this real story. I forgot to pray for the guy in San Jose. Anybody told someone you're going to pray for them and forgot to pray? Okay, that's, that's what I did. So I, I, pray, I forgot. So 2.30 in the afternoon, Pastor Hadaball, it's been, it's been several hours now. I'm walking around the sanctuary praying for my service that night, and it hits me. You forgot to pray for Nathan's court situation with the kids. And I thought, oh, God. I just began to repent. I was like, God, I'm so sorry. I, I know it's over with by now. I'm so sorry. I, I was I told him I would pray. I gave him my word I would pray, and I just forgot, and I'm repenting, and God spoke to me, and God said, intercede now. And I said, but why now? It's already over. So I just text Nathan, praying, and started going into praying, interceding, walking around that sanctuary in Muncie, Indiana, and I got a text back from Nathan right then and said, perfect timing. The judge just now walked into his chambers to decide who gets the kids. I said, Nathan, what is the judge's name? He texted me the name. I said, okay, God. I said, thanks, Nathan. I said, God, I got to talk to you right now. I said, I know I missed it this morning. I'm sorry. But I need you to do something right now. I need you, God, to send angels to judge so-and-so's chambers in Portland, Oregon. He's in his chambers right now. And I need you to tell him to let those kids come back to their mommy. 
And uh, I prayed and cried, and I got done. And an hour later, he called me. He said, Josh, you're not going to believe this. I said, try me. He said, when our own attorney showed up this morning at the court, our own attorney said, you need a miracle. There's not enough evidence for you to get this. He said, the judge said to us as he walked into his chambers right before you text us, he said, really, there's not enough evidence for me to overturn this, and I'm just going to be right back. He went to the chambers, and he came out. He said, but when he came out, this is what he said. He said, I don't know why I'm doing this. But while I was in my chambers, I decided to change my mind, and I'm going to give you the babies back right now. Somebody's about to get the miracle in your kids. I said God is about to give you a miracle with your children. Let's stand right now. The gift of faith has just moved above the surface. Who's needing a miracle? Some of it's physical, some of it's emotional, some of it's financial. Someone needs a miracle with their kids, their marriage. You need to get up here right now. 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 You need to let it loose right now. You need to not hold back right now. You need to not care who's looking at you right now. And you need to pray to your father like you've never prayed before. You need to call on God right now like you've never called on God. You need to pray a current prayer right now. Lord Jesus, let there be a miracle right here. Let there be a miracle right here, Lord Jesus. Let there be a miracle. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. No music, just desperation. No music, just desperation. If you've come to watch, move out of the way because we don't need that right now. We need somebody with a current prayer to let it fly, let it loose. Show God you believe him. Show God you trust him. Show God you know he's going to come through. Welcome to the season of answered prayers. Welcome to your season of answered prayers. Welcome to your season of answered prayers. Somebody get real with God. Come on, Bartimaeus, where are you? Come on, Bartimaeus, where are you? Come on, Esther, where are you? Get desperate with the king. Show God you're able to go after him like you've never gone after him. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Somebody pray an effectual, fervent prayer. Somebody pray an effectual, fervent prayer. Thank you, Lord, for what you gave him tonight. You gave him the Holy Ghost tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the miracle that's going to happen in the family now. It's yours. Your prayer matters more than mine right now. 
Your voice matters more than mine in this situation. Somebody call on God. Somebody pray like it's your last altar call. Somebody pray like it's your last altar call. Somebody pray like it's your last altar call. Somebody pray like it's your last encounter. Somebody pray your last prayer. What would you pray if this was your last prayer? How desperate would you be if this was your last time to reach out to God? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me, have mercy on my family, have mercy on my kids, have mercy on my wife, have mercy on our home, have mercy on our life, have mercy in our family, oh God. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. It's time for you to pray your biggest prayers. You've been praying prayers too small. You've been praying prayers bored. You've been praying prayers in doubt, in fear. You need to bust out your faith right now, and you need to pray a big prayer. God has power over the court system. I said God has power over the court system. God has power over the doctors. God has power over the disease. God has power over the debt. God has power over the dilemma. God has power over the destruction. God has power over everything attacking you. Every person with glasses, take your glasses off right now. If you've got contacts, lay your hands on your own eyes. I'm going to have you shout the name of Jesus in a moment. And vision is going to clear across this altar by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus. Open up everyone's eyes in Jesus' name. Shout Jesus. Let the eyes see. Let vision clear. Let vision clear. Let eyes see. Let vision clear. Let vision clear. Jesus, let the ears be open, let hearing aids be gone, in Jesus' name. Cancer cells, it's time to go in the name of the Lord Jesus now. Diabetes be gone in the name of the Lord Jesus right now. Arthritis, leave that foot, leave that hand right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Fibromyalgia, you need to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Heart disease, disappear in Jesus' name. Phone calls are coming. Promotions are coming. Blessings are coming. Answers are coming. Direction is coming. Miracles are coming. (laughs) 
see clearly, see clearly, see clearly, see clearly, see clearly, see clearly, see clearly. There's some men going to war over here. There's some men going to war over here. See clearly, see clearly. It's happening right now while you're praying. Oh, let the word of God speak. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. This is your word, God. This is your word. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. No. I feel intercessory prayer in here. I feel intercessory prayer in this room. I feel intercessors need to let it loose right now. Where are the intercessors at in this church? Let it loose right now. Where are the intercessors at right now? It's time for you to step in. It's time for you to engage right now. It's time for you to let your voice out right now. It's time for you to find a place right now. Come on, clear the pathway, intercessors. Clear the pathway, intercessors. Yo, kiedy si mano celero kata in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Somebody needs funds for an airplane ticket. It's coming this week. It's coming this week. It's coming this week. The answer is coming to you. Ilomo Silaman. <laughs> 